Now, as tensions continue to flare in the Red Sea, the United States and United Kingdom have launched their first strikes against Houthi-linked targets across Yemen. The Houthis now claim that five have been killed and six wounded in this attack. And as per U.S. President Joe Biden, the strikes are backed by Australia, Canada, Bahrain and the Netherlands. The retaliation comes just days after the navies of the two countries thwarted the biggest Houthi attack in the Red Sea till date. And this is the first attack against the Iran-backed rebels since their aggression against shipping vessels began last year. The strikes have reportedly been carried out by aircraft, ship and submarines. And as per reports, the Western militaries are targeting drone and missile launch sites along with radar stations and weapon stockpiles in Yemen's coastal areas. The counter-offensive aims to halt the Houthi missiles and drone assault in the vital shipping route. The Houthis have also confirmed the Western raids struck targets in the capital city of Sana'a along with the cities of Sada and Dhamar. The militant group has termed the strike, and I'm quoting here, as an American Zionist British aggression. On the other hand, US President Joe Biden has issued a statement following the strikes, which reads, and I'm quoting, Today, at my direction, U.S. military forces, together with the United Kingdom and with support from Australia, Bahrain, Canada and the Netherlands, successfully conducted strikes against a number of targets in Yemen used by Houthi rebels to endanger freedom of navigation in one of the world's most vital waterways. On the other hand, UK's Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has also confirmed that the Royal Air Force carried out targeted strikes on Houthi military facilities in Yemen. He added, and I'm quoting here again, their reckless actions are risking lives at sea and exacerbating the humanitarian crisis in Yemen. A joint statement from the governments of Australia, Bahrain, Canada, Denmark, Germany, Netherlands, New Zealand, Republic of Korea, United Kingdom and the United States has also been released. The countries say that they will not hesitate to defend lives and protect the free flow of commerce in the critical waterways in the face of continued threat. Following the strikes, Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives Mike Johnson took to his social media account. He said that the Houthis have a serious price to pay for their global acts of terrors. Holding the Biden administration onto account, he said that this incident should shift the U.S. government's approach to Iran. The Australian Defence Minister Richard Mulls has said that the country provided pers personal support and operational headquarters to the United States and United Kingdom in the operation against the Houthis. The Defence Minister said, and I'm quoting here again, Australia will continue to support any actions which assert the global rules-based order. Now, Yemen's neighbouring Saudi Arabia has also voiced quote-unquote great concern over the strikes and has urged against the escalation in the Red Sea. Meanwhile, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken spoke with India's External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar welcoming increased cooperation with India to defend the freedom of navigation in the region. The Houthis, who control most of Yemen, have been targeting commercial vessels in the Red Sea to show their support for Hamas following the outbreak of its war against Israel. The attacks have disrupted international commerce on the routes between Europe and Asia. That accounts for over 15% of the world's shipping traffic.